Hello. In this video, we're going to look at uh, ways to use the Casio FX CG50 to find the area under the curve for the given z-score intervals. Uh, so for the first one, we are given the area to the left of the given z-score of negative 0.53. So z equals negative 0.53. We want to find the area to the left of it. We know it's to the left because it's shaded to the left. So in the Casio calculator, we're going to need to know what the lower bound is. Now, technically, we talked about this in another video, technically the lower bound of each of these uh, normal distributions is going to be negative infinity, and the upper bound is going to be positive infinity. Uh, for the shaded region, we're going to need to know what the lower bound is, and the upper bound, the upper bound, will be our z-score of negative 0.53. All right, there are two ways of doing this in the, in the Casio calculator. The first way is to press 1, and then to press second vars. At least I thought it was. Shift programs. Oh, maybe not. Sorry about that. Um, it is actually to press the option button, not the program button. From options, you can press stat, F5, and then F3, distribution, and then F1, normal, and then you can use NPD, NCD, or inverse norm. For all of these questions, we are never going to use NPD. We're only going to use either NCD or inverse norm. For this particular video, all of the questions will be NCD. Now, what's not so nice here is that the normal cumulative density function uh, entries are not really telling us what we need to do here. So let me delete this, and I'll show you the easier way of doing this, which is how we're always going to do it. If we hit menu, go to number two for statistics, we can get to the same options, but by pressing F5, F1 for normal, and then F2 for normal CD, uh, we'll actually be able to just enter the values in in a much more um, user-friendly way. So the lower value here, we're going to enter in as negative, and we can use x, 10 to the x button, 99. Nine. This will be similar to, um, or actually it is the scientific notation way of showing negative 10 to the 99th power. So negative one with 99 zeros uh, is going to be a huge negative number. The upper bound is going to be negative 0.53. The standard deviation is going to be one and the mean is going to be zero. And we can type those in and we will get a z-score, sorry, a, an area or a probability of 0.2981. I kind of glossed over this at the beginning. The area, if you remember from previous lessons, the area is equal to the probability. So if we want to find the area of the shaded region, it's the same thing as finding the probability that our z-score is in that region. All right, let's look at another example. For this next example, it says, find the area of the shaded region, it's similar to saying, find the probability that a randomly chosen x value is greater than or more than 1.25. So if we're trying to find the area of the shaded region to the right now, of 1.25, it's the same thing as saying, what's the probability that our z-score is greater than 1.25? So again, in the Casio, we can just press exit, and it'll bring us right back to our normal CD calculator. We need to identify what the lower bound will be for all of these. In this case, the lower bound of this picture is gonna be negative 1.25. And we need to identify the upper bound. In this case, technically, the upper bound is going to be infinity. To type in infinity, we can just do 10 to the 99th power. Oops, it does not look like 10 to the 99th power. So my lower bound, I'm going to type in 
My upper bound, I'm going to type in x, 10 to the x, 9, 9, and leave the standard deviation 1 and the mean of 0. And I will get that the area to the right of a z-score of 1.25 is 0 0.1056. Again, um, oh, I don't know why I put negative there. I apologize. My lower bound is 1.25. My upper bound is E99 or 10 to the 99th power or infinity, some really large number, and I'll get that the area for that shaded region is 1 point, uh, 0.1056. Therefore, the probability is 0 0.1056. All right, let's do some more examples. For these next three examples, we are being asked to find the proportion of the area under the curve all of which are to the left of the given z-score. For each of these types of questions, I like to draw pictures. Uh, I feel as though, me personally, if I can find a visual of what I'm trying to look for, I can then better understand what it is that I'm actually trying to look for. So if I'm looking to find the area to the left of a z-score of negative 1.85, Really, I'm looking for the probability that my given value is less than negative 1.85. Well, my lower bound is going to be negative 10 to the 99th power. And my upper bound is going to be negative 1.85. So in the Casio, I can press exit once. It brings me back to the normal cumulative density function calculator. I can type in negative x 10 to the x 99. My upper value is going to be negative 1.85. Standard deviation of 1, mean of 0, because again, we're dealing with the standard normal distribution. We're basically using these as if they are z-scores. And we'll find that the probability of our z-score being in that shaded region will be 0 0.0322. Just reading that right from the calculator. Now, we are always going to round these areas to four place values, unless you're told otherwise. Most of the homework and most of the exam questions will say round to four place values. All right, for our second picture, we want to find the area to the left of a z-score of 1.5. So we're looking for this green shaded region here now, where our z-score is 1.5. Now you'll notice that in the purple region for part A, the very small portion of the graph was shaded, and that's why our probability was 0 0.0322. For the green shaded region, a very large proportion of our graph is shaded, therefore our probability is going to be much higher. The probability that the z-score is less than 1.5 will be a much larger probability. So press exit. We can leave the negative E99 or negative 10 to the 99 power because our lower bound is going to be the same for all of these because all of them are being shaded to the left. We'll only need to change our upper bound. And we'll get that the green shaded region is 0 0.3, no, sorry, 0 0.9332. Again, rounding to four place values, just reading the p value, the probability from my calculator. All right, uh, and lastly, really quickly, we can do this one. Um, let's use let's use let's use blue. Z score of zero. Well, this should be pretty straightforward. Since this graph is symmetric, uh, this probability should be zero point five. Let's just confirm it. Exit. Make the upper value zero, and half the graph is to the left. All right, that's how we can find the area underneath the curve to the left of a given z-score. Now let's look at some examples of finding the area underneath the given curve, underneath the standard normal curve, to the right of a given z-score. All right, so uh, from here, we're going to graph negative 1.37, somewhere around there. I'm going to shade to the right. You'll notice that this graph should be more than half of the area. The probability that our z-score is greater than negative 1.37 
should be more than half the graph because a z-score of 0 would be half the graph. So it should be more than half, more than 0.5. Again, to calculate these, we just need to know what the lower value is. In this case, negative 1.37. And then we need to know what the upper value is. In this case, 10 to the 99th power, because technically this gets shaded all the way to infinity. So we can press exit. We'll change our lower value to negative 1.37. Uh, just a real quick warning, whenever you're typing in the negative value, make sure you use the negative button on the bottom row, not the subtraction button on the second row. If you use the subtraction button, you'll get an error in your calculator. So to type in 10 to the 99th, we're going to use this x, 10 to the x button, 99. Now, we don't need to worry about typing anything in front of this. We should put a 1 here, but the calculator is smart enough to know that if we're just multiplying anything by 10 to the 99, it really is just the number 1. And we'll get our area of 0.9147. Okay, so if we have to find the area to the right of a z-score of 0, we know that the area to the right of a z-score of 0 should be a half because it's half the graph. So this probability should be 0.5. We could just type that in real quick, press exit once. Again, our upper bound is going to stay the same for all of these because they're all being shaded to the right. So we just need to change the lower bound to 0 and we'll get 0.5. Perfect. That's what we were hoping for. Now for the last one, to the right of a z-score of 0.67, somewhere around here. This one should be less than half. Again, uh, the graph for part A is more than a half, more than 0.5. The graph for part B is exactly 0.5. And the graph for part C, the probability for part C should be less than 0.5. So press exit once, change the lower bound to 0.67, and press execute. And we'll get that the area to the right of a z-score of 0 0.67. Therefore, the probability of getting a z-score that's greater than 0.67 from a random selection will be 0.2514. All right, so that's how to find the area to the right of a given z-score. These next few examples will ask us to find the proportion of area under the curve for the z-scores in these intervals between z-scores, which is actually going to be even easier for the first one, our z-score of 0 and our z-score of 1.5, the proportion of area under the curve, or the probability that our z-score is between 0 and 1.5 will be very straightforward because our lower bound is 0, our upper bound, I forgot that, is 1.5. You have to have press execute, not the down arrow. The standard deviation is 1. The mean is 0 because, again, we're talking about the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is a standardized distribution, basically talking about it in terms of z-scores. And the mean is 0. Oops. Mean is equal to 0. Let me make that a little bit neater and the standard deviation is equal to 1, by definition, when we're talking about z-scores. Uh, press execute, and we will get that the area and the probability will be 0 0.4332. Now for our second graph, we have between a z-score of negative 1.25 and positive 2. So between negative 1.25 and positive 2. So again, in the Casio calculator, it works out pretty nicely. We're just going to use negative 1.25 as our lower bound, positive 2 as our upper bound. Press exit once, and it brings us back to the normal CD calculator. Just need to change our lower bound to negative 1.25, and our upper bound to 2. Press execute, and we will get that the area is 0.8716. Again, we're always rounding these areas to four place values. 
Uh, it makes sense to do that with this example, but for all of them, unless you're told otherwise, we're going to round to four place values. All right, these last two <coughs> examples, I'm going to go a little out of order. If we look here, we remember from the empirical rule that approximately 95% of the data values are between negative 2 and positive 2, or 95% of the data values are within two standard deviations from the empirical rule. However, if we use the technology here to find the exact values between these, the probability that the z-score is between negative 2 and positive 2, probably should have made my 2s look a little bit nicer, we'll find that it's not exactly 0.95, lower value of negative 2, upper value is going to stay positive 2. We'll find that this is approximately 0.9545 or 95.45% of the graph. But if we look at example C here, 1.96 to negative 1.96, press exit, change the lower value to negative 1.96, and change the upper value to positive 1.96, we'll find that this probability is a lot closer to 0 0.9500. It's essentially 95% of the graph. So again, the S, uh, I'm sorry. The empirical rule was a good estimation, but the normal CDF calculation in the, the Casio calculator will give us the exact probabilities in the exact areas underneath the curve. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you watch the other videos in this series.